Arun and Gaurav have to clear their respective loans by paying three equal annual installments of rupees 30,000 each. Arun pays at 10% per annum of simple interest, while Gaurav pays at 10% per annum compound interest. What is the difference in their loan amounts? What is the difference in their loan amounts? So very interesting one here. He's talking about two guys, Arun and Gaurav, who have to clear their respective loans. Right? Each of them have taken some loans. And both of them are going to clear their loans by paying three equal annual installments. Three equal annual installments of rupees 30,000 each. Right, so Arun is going to pay 30,000 three times. Gaurav is also going to pay 30,000 three times. However, Arun is paying at what rate? 10 percentage per annum of simple interest. While Gaurav is paying at 10 percentage per annum of compound interest. Right, so Arun is being charged 10 percentage per annum simple interest. Gaurav is being charged 10 percentage per annum compound interest. So obviously, though the installments are equal, 30,000 each, the, the calculation is different. The calculation to arrive at that, that 30,000 rupees is different. So the question here is, what is the difference in their loan amounts? See, if the rate of interest is same for both of them, 10% simple interest, 10% simple interest, and EMIs are also same, then we can say that both of them have taken the same loan amount, and hence the difference should be zero, right? In that case, the difference would become zero. If both are at 10% SI or 10% CI, then I can say difference is zero because same installment is being paid, same is the rate of interest. So obviously, the loan amount also has to be same. But here the loan amount loan amounts will be different. Why will those loan amounts be different? Because one guy is paying at simple interest and the other guy is paying at compound interest. Yeah. So what is the difference in their loan amount is the question, right? What is the difference in their loan amount? See, try, try and understand that when you calculate this 30,000 rupees, I mean, when you break this 30,000 rupees, this 30,000 rupees will have some interest component and some principal component. Yes or no? Any installment that you pay, any installment uh, that you pay will have two components in it, right? One is the principal amount because in each installment you're clearing some principal amount and the rest is in interest, right? Now, depending on how the calculation is being done, this could vary. But one point that you need to understand is, see, the total duration is what? Three years. The whole idea is that three years, right? So let's say they have taken the loan here. Uh, this is Arun and this is Gaurav. All this drama need not be done in the exam. For the sake of clear explanation, I'm just putting it up on paper, right? Try and understand. So total duration is three years. Now, at the end of first year, this is the end of first year. This is the end of second year. Just a second. Yeah, this is the first year, end of first year. This, this span is first year. This is the second year and this is the third year. Right? What happens? Each one of them is paying 30,000, right? 30,000 Arun has paid at the end of first year. Gaurav has also paid 30,000 at the end of first year. Arun has paid 30,000 at the end of second year and so has Gaurav. At the end of third year also, Arun has paid 30,000 and Gaurav has paid 30,000. But remember the calculation here is 10% SI for Arun and calculation for Gaurav is 10% CI, 10% compound test. Now what you need to understand is simple. Total amount that each one of them have paid at the end of three years is 90,000 rupees. 30, 30, 30 plus 30, 30, 30. I mean, 90,000 rupees each one of them have paid. But then, in the current state of things, what will happen? If, if you look at it, if I if, if Arun deposits, deposits 30,000 rupees in a bank, let's say. See, what are we trying to do here is, eventually find out that at this point, how much has each one of them have paid totally? What is the total paid by each one of them? What is the total paid by Arun? And what is the total paid by Gaurav? Total amount paid by Arun and total amount paid by Gaurav. That's what we are trying to establish. Total for each one of them. Now, don't get confused. Don't get confused and say, tell me that total paid by Arun is 30 times 3, 90,000. Total paid by Gaurav is 30 times 3, 90,000. Total in terms of EMIs that is paid is 30,000. But then there is an interest involved, right? See, if today Arun deposits 30,000 rupees in a bank, if this 30,000 rupees which he is paying at the end of first year, if it is deposited in a bank, won't he get interest for two years, second year and third year? Yes. At what rate? At 10 percentage SI. Because that's the calculation involved for Arun. Yeah. Similarly, this 30,000 rupees, which he has paid at the end of second year, won't it get him interest of uh, uh, 10 percentage for one year, for the third year alone? Yes. Ah, this 30,000 that he has paid at the end of third year will not attract any interest. Because you have paid now. I'm, I'm trying to find out how much will it become totally at the end of third year. At the end of third year. At this point, how much will it become? Yeah. So the point I'm trying to make is the first installment that these guys have paid, 
will get them interest for two years if they if they deposit this amount in the bank right arun will get 10% for two years at simple interest gaurav on the other hand will get 10% per annum for two years at compounding process in 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 a compounding way similarly the amount that they pay at the end of second year what happens this 30000 rupees is there in the business in the bank for one year this 30000 is also there in the bank for only one year only for third year so this 30000 will attract 10 percentage simple interest this 30000 will attract 10 percentage compound interest similarly this 30 percentage this 30000 will not get in, get them anything there won't be any interest at all you are getting it so what we are trying to do is total for arun at the end of at the end of third year at the end of third year similarly total for uh, this fellow gaurav at the end of third year now let's let's do the calculation total calculation for arun at the end of third year what happens see look at this this is going to be this 30000 rupees that he has paid Mm. This first thirty thousand rupees that he has paid, it will become thirty thousand. See, he will get mm, yeah. So see, since it is ten percentage per annum, he will get uh, twenty percentage, right? Do you understand this thirty thousand? Um, let, let me do this way. I'll, I'll split the principal part and interest part. Yeah. So total one is ninety thousand rupees, which he has paid in three installments plus the interest calculation. Look at this. So the first thirty thousand rupees will get him interest for how many years? Two years. Ten percentage and ten percentage. That becomes twenty percentage. Yeah. And the second thirty thousand rupees. Will get him interest for how many years? Only for one year. How much will that be? Ten percentage. The third thirty thousand will not get get him anything. Zero percentage. You are able to follow. So the first installment that he has paid will attract twenty percentage simple interest. Second installment will get only ten percentage simple interest. Third installment will not get him any interest. So this is the total amount for Arun. Sim so so you have to simplify this. Similarly, do the total amount total amount for Gaurav. I mean, don't write total for Gaurav at the end of three years and all that. In fact, it's not at the end of at the end of three years, not at the end of third year. I mean, at the end of third year also would mean the same, but you know, at the end of three years, totally at the end of three years, at the end of three years. Here also at the end of three years. What happens in case of Gorun Gorov? Ninety thousand anyway, his trade he has paid plus this thirty thousand rupees. The first thirty thousand rupees, first thirty thousand rupees will get him uh, compounding interest, right? So ten percentage for two years. Ten percentage for two years is how much? Ten percent plus ten percent plus ten into ten by hundred. You are able to follow. Ten percentage for the first year, ten percentage for the second year. You know the compounding process, right? Ten plus ten plus ten into ten by hundred. The effective percentage concept that we have discussed. So the first thirty thousand will attract how much interest? Twenty one percentage. Like here we have taken ten into two. Here it will be ten plus ten plus ten into ten by hundred. So twenty one percentage. The second thirty thousand, though it is a compounding interest, the period is only one year. Second thirty thousand will also get in ten percentage compound interest, but since the period is only one year. You know that for one year, simple interest is uh, compound interest is same as simple interest. So second installment will get him only ten percentage of compound interest because it's only one year. Third installment will not get him anything, zero percentage. That's it. So he is asking us to find out the difference in the loan amounts. So difference in the loan amounts is nothing. Be nothing is is nothing but the difference in these two total amounts. Are you able to follow? I mean, understand the point that difference in the loans. Difference of loans is equivalent to difference of total amounts. The two total amounts, the two total amounts. So that should be equal to what? See, if I have to calculate the difference, is thirty thousand, thirty thousand gets cancelled, ninety thousand, ninety thousand gets cancelled, ninety k minus ninety k gets cancelled. How much is this? Twenty plus ten, thirty percentage. How much is this? Twenty one plus ten, thirty one percentage. So what's the difference? Thirty one percentage of thirty thousand minus thirty percentage of thirty thousand. So thirty one percentage minus thirty percentage one percentage. What is one percentage of thirty thousand? One percentage of thirty thousand is three hundred rupees. 
that's your answer 300 rupees is the final answer now do not go by the length of the explanation or all these steps that we have put on paper right like like when you solve it yourself in the exam you won't write all these things right i mean you won't be putting all these steps yeah don't do this i mean this is just for the sake of explanation that how the whole process works and and don't write all these steps also total for arun total for gaurav and all that i mean you should just play with numbers and again when you are playing with numbers also you know that 90 anyway is going to get cancelled so all you have to worry about is this percentage calculation what is the total interest that arun will attract and what is the total interest that gaurav would attract the difference of those interest only will be the difference of the rural amounts remember this difference that we have calculated here is actually the difference of the total amount that would that they would get if they deposit the same thing in the bank in the same fashion but the idea is the difference of the loans will be nothing but the difference of those totals so that is the reason we are uh, doing this calculation this way right so 300 is the final answer